Hello, and welcome to the next video in my series on operations management. Now, two notes before we get going. Number one, I am recording this video on the evening of July 4th, which here in the U.S. is our Independence Day. So if you're watching this in Britain, sorry chaps, but it also means that people are outside setting off fireworks. So if you hear random popping noises in the background, that's what you're hearing. And you may also hear a fire truck when someone ends up setting their yard on fire. Number two, good news. This is my first video after my 500th video view. So all of my viewers out there, I want to thank you very much for tuning in to the videos. I do put a lot of work into them, so I'm very glad to know that people are in fact watching them. So all that being said, let's go ahead and dive right in to today's topic. In this video, we will be talking about time series forecasting. Just going over the basics of what it is and some examples of how we use it in our everyday lives. The first example are weather forecasts. Everyone wakes up every day, watches the news, and wants to know what the weather's going to be like for the next few days. And of course, that is a time series forecast into the future. And of course, right now, here in the middle of the U.S., we are undergoing a tremendous, terrible heat wave. So you can see the high temperatures are 100 degrees. But weather overall is a time series forecast on several scales. And of course, we all know that the seasons, uh, the weather changes during the seasons, but it also happens, you know, on shorter time frames when we have a heat wave. So weather forecasts are one obvious example of a time series forecast. Another example are stock market forecasts. So here we have the stock price for the General Electric Company, GE, from the beginning of 2012 all the way through uh, yesterday. And you can see it trades pretty much in a range between $18 per share and $20 per share, give or take the occasional blip over. So if we're investors, we can use time series forecasting to you know, make some sort of educated assessment about where we think that stock price should be over a certain amount of time. And of course, as investors, if we can figure that out, that's a lot better than guessing, and it helps us make better investment decisions. A college enrollment is another one. So if you work in the administration of a university anywhere in the world, but particularly here in the U.S., you are interested in what your enrollment is forecasted to be in the next year or year after that. And actually in the second video of this series on time series forecasting, we're going to do a very in-depth look at college enrollment forecasts. So here is a graph of quarterly iPhone sales up through the first quarter of 2011. I could not find anything more recent. But here you can definitely see that iPhone sales have increased substantially over the course of the end of 2007 through the beginning of 2011. And many companies, almost all you know, large legitimate companies, will be doing sales forecasts for their products and things like that. So that's definitely a good example of a time series forecast. Um, hurricane tracking. We are in hurricane season here in North America, so this is very important. And of course, you can see, at least in this graphic, we have a hurricane. You know, I'm not sure from when this was, I'm guessing last year, of a hurricane that is going up the eastern coast of the United States. And there are two things about this that are important. Along the blue line leading northward, we have little hurricane symbols that show where the hurricane center is expected to be each day. And then the bluish cone shape is sort of a probability cone of the hurricane track. So we have two things going on in this, but of course, hurricane tracking takes into account direction and speed to determine where the hurricane will be, you know, a day or two or three from where it is now. So that's definitely one that we'll be using here very soon. So we looked at some examples, but what exactly is it? Well, time series forecasting is the science and sometimes art of predicting events or data measurements in the future. And that should be pretty obvious. It helps us eliminate just outright guessing by using some simple mathematics, probability, and statistics. Now, some time series forecasting can get very, very complex. Now, at this point, I'm not sure how deep into the weeds on that I'm going to go in my videos. 
But just keep in mind that what we're going to be doing here at the beginning at least is very simple in terms of the mathematics involved. Now time series forecasting helps us recognize and adjust for data patterns like trends and cycles. And these patterns are called time series decomposition. So on that note, let's talk a little bit more about time series decomposition. The first kind is a trend, which is a gradual upward or downward movement in a data pattern. So if you remember our graph on the iPhone sales, the iPhone sales pattern or trend was definitely upward over the past few years because the sales of iPhones has exploded over the past four or five years. Uh, seasonality. And that's a data pattern that repeats over a certain time period. So if you think of a product like sunscreen, well, they're going to sell more sunscreen you know, in the spring and summer. Or, but, you know, the opposite is snow shovels. More snow shovels are going to be sold in the fall and winter. And that's definitely a seasonal data pattern in terms of two products. Cycles. These are longer periods, longer data patterns that occur over several years' time. So most advanced economies undergo expansions and contractions, kind of like, you know, traffic does in the interstate. You'll go along nice and smooth for a while, but then it'll kind of bunch up and slow down, and then it'll go faster again, and then it'll kind of bunch up and slow down. Large economies tend to work in the same way, and we'll see an example of that coming up. And the last one is called irregular. These are changes in the data caused by sort of random chance events that really don't have any predictable pattern. So, you know, natural events like hurricanes or earthquakes or something like that, computer system errors that just happen out of the blue, we'll look at one of those here in a minute, and just stuff like that that we can't really predict because they're just random events. Now, time series categories are not mutually exclusive. Some data fit multiple decomposition models. So we could have a you know, a seasonal trend. We could have a, a cycle that is intermixed with irregular blips in it. So these categories are not mutually exclusive. So again, here is our iPhone sales data. And of course, this is a trend and it is a trend upward. So if we were to draw a line from 2007 up through 2008, 2009, and 10, you will see we were in a very steep upward trend in terms of iPhone sales. The next is seasonality. Now these are home sale closings in the Metro Denver, Colorado area, which is in the western part of the US. So if you look at these data points, along the bottom you'll see January, May, September, January, May, September, from 03 up to September of 2011. Now, if you notice, there's always a low point in the data in January. You know, a lot of people are not closing on houses in January, especially in Denver. But then as you go throughout the year and you get around August, September, there's a spike. And then it goes back down in January. It comes back up and then goes back down, up and down. And this is a very distinct seasonal pattern in terms of home sales, at least in this uh, metropolitan area. And it holds true statewide. It holds true if you're in and around the Denver area, which is the blue. And it holds true if you're in and around the Pikes Peak area, which is there in the green. So this seasonality pattern works on all levels. And then cycles. So this is uh, Japan's economic cycle from the early 90s, actually the late 80s, up through 2003. And I apologize for the blurriness. I kind of had to blow it up so you could see the uh, graph. But you can see over the course of several years, it's, there's an up, and then it comes down into like 1993, 94, and it comes up again, up through 1996 and 7, and then it goes down again. And these cycles span, you know, multiple years, up and down, up and down. And these economic cycles are well documented all throughout the last hundred years in all advanced economies. It's just the way economic activity works for a multitude of reasons. And then we have the irregular data. Now this is a one day chart of the stock exchange on May 6th, 2010. 
And for those of you that remember, this was the day of the, quote, flash crash. And if we're going along during the day, you know, 9, 10, 11, everything's fine. And all of a sudden, around 2.30, 3 in the afternoon, the stock goes, stock market goes straight down. In a matter of minutes, you could just see the, the digits rolling downward. And, of course, everyone's freaking out. What is going on? And then not a half an hour later, it bounces back up again. So what happened? Well, it was a computer error. <laughs> the, the entire stock market tanked because of some computer error somewhere. And, of course, there's no way of predicting that sort of thing. It just sort of happens out of the blue. But it can obviously have real consequences in real life, and in this case, in terms of investors you know, panicking, thinking the entire stock market is crashing. So this is an example, a really good example, of an irregular pattern, which is actually a lack of a pattern. Let's review real quick, and then we'll be done. Remember that time series forecasting is the science and sometimes art of predicting events or data in the future. It helps us eliminate outright guessing by using some simple math, probability, and statistics. And again, this can get very complex, but in at least the first few videos, I will just be going over the basics. It helps us recognize and adjust for patterns, so trends and cycles and the things we just discussed. Now, we'll note here that it also helps us point out irregularities. So if we have that sudden drop in the stock market, we can probably think, you know, without any other news about why that might be, we can kind of assume that that's something very weird going on that's not tied to anything else. And, of course, you know, I'm not sure how they handle that exactly, but if you're a very savvy investor, once everything drops in value, if you can snap it up real fast, knowing it's going to go back up, uh, then more power to you. But it also helps us recognize those irregularities. And time series forecasting often fits more one or more common patterns. So it could be a trend and a cycle. And we'll take a look at data that fit multiple categories in the next couple of videos. All right. So that is it for our introduction to time series forecasting. Again, thank you very much for watching. And I look forward to seeing you again next time. <laughs>